All right, so we're gonna start looking at rational functions. Um, so we'll go ahead and fill out the, the blanks up here. So division by zero is not defined. So the expression is undefined when its denominator is zero. So this is important because we actually have to find these, um, what we call kind of limits, um, in order to understand what the, the value of x or the variable cannot be, okay? Um, so we must find all of the values of u um, for which the expression is undefined. I don't know exactly why I use u's because this is an x. <laughs> Got to fix that. Um, so we set the denominator equal to 0, and we solve for u. Again, that should be an x. <laughs> Just an oops on my part. Um, so it asks us to find all excluded values for the expression. So that's what I was just talking about up here. So excluded values are when the denominator equals zero, and that's not allowed, okay? We're, we can't have the, the denom denominator equaling zero. And I know if you've been in my class before, I've talked about why we can't divide by zero, and I like to use my pizza analogy or my pizza story. So if we order a pizza for the classroom and it shows up and there are zero pieces in the box, there's nothing in the box, and at the end of class, we open the box and there's five pieces in there. Well, that doesn't make any sense. There was zero to start with. How did we get five magic pieces of pizza, right? That's the idea of zero on the bottom, on the denominator, okay? Because the, the denominator tells us how many pieces we have for a whole, okay? So if I have zero, I can't all of a sudden have five pieces of nothing. But if the pizza showed up and there were five pieces to begin with, and then at the end of class there were zero pieces, well we probably just ate them. That's okay. I can start with five pieces and then eat them all. So that would be zero over five, right? Five is my denominator in that case because five is the total number of pieces in the pizza, okay? So it's just kind of a, you know, silly way of me going through it. I know I didn't have a visual for that one, but it's just that idea. You can't have something from nothing, okay? And the, the bottom of the denominator tells us what we have as a whole. Um, so, um, we're going to go through and we're going to find our values. So we're going to take that denominator, that 4x minus 12, and we're going to say equals 0, okay? And we're just going to solve this. So remember, I'm trying to get x by itself, so that means I'm going to look at what's being added or subtracted, I'm going to do the opposite. So I'm going to add 12 to both sides. 4x is going to drop down. The 12s cancel here, negative 12 plus 12, that's 0, okay? And then 0 plus 12 is 12. So now, I still don't want 4x. I'm going to divide by 4 on both sides because that's the opposite of multiplication. 4 divided by 4 cancels, so I just have x. 12 divided by 4 is 3. So the expression is undefined when x equals 3. So this is kind of a limit. We can't, we can choose any other number. We can't choose 3. 3 cannot be one of the, the values for our solution simply because it would give us 0 in the denominator. Okay, so they're just having you practice this idea. Because um, on the very next screen here, we're going to start talking um, about graphing these. And we need to know what these limits are when we graph it. So an isomptote is basically a limit line for the function. Okay? It's exactly what we were just talking about. What was our limit? What can it not be? Okay? So we have two types of isomptote. We can have a vertical, meaning that it's going up and down, or horizontal, meaning that it's going side to side. Okay? So as stated above, Division by zero is not defined, so the value of the variable that results in zero on the denominator is the vertical isomptote. So what we just did is our vertical limit line, okay? Horizontal isomptote is a rational function can have at most one horizontal isomptote. To find the horizontal isomptote, if any, so we don't always have one, but if any, we compare the degree, which we say is n, of the numerator with the degree m of the denominator. So remember, the degree is just the highest exponent in a polynomial. So we just want to take a look at, you know, the, the numerator and say, okay, which one has the highest exponent? That's my degree. So it's just, it's the biggest exponent. That's all we're looking for. Okay, so down here we have three situations. So if, if n is great, or sorry, less than m, and this is the, the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. So if, if n is less than m, then we have a horizontal isomptote at y equals zero. So right across the the x-axis, basically, okay? If m is, or sorry, n is equal to m, then we do have a little bit more to look at. We have um, a fraction that we're going to end up with because the horizontal isomptote is given by y equals, it's the leading coefficient of the numerator divided by the leading coefficient of the denominator. So leading coefficient, if I identify the degree, which I already had to do for this, so the highest um, exponent, well, the leading coefficient is just the number that's in front of the variable there. 
So it's attached to that um, high exponent, okay, the degree. So we just compare those two, and that tells us where our isotope is going to be. Now, if n is greater than m, there is no horizontal isotope. So we have three situations here. So we do have to remember this because it just kind of depends on what's going to happen, um, or it's going to kind of help us graph this whole feed, um, function. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. Um, and I have a silly little thing. So again, think of isotope as a limit line that the function is always going to be approaching, but it's never actually going to get there. It's going to get closer and closer and closer to this line, but it's never going to get there. So my silly little thing here is, if you've seen Lord of the Rings, here's Mr. Gandalf saying, you shall not pass. So you can see this is what our functions are going to look like. They're going to kind of look like U-ish shapes kind of going off to the side or a swoop, I guess you could say. And it's going to get closer and closer to these this line, but it's never actually going to reach it. It also looks like this is another isotope. They just don't have it on here. So it does look like it has a horizontal one on y equals zero. Um, for this one, because that's what Gandalf is standing on here. Um, and a lot of this other, these pieces also have to do with um, Lord of the Rings, because Balrog is the creature he fights when he says this. Um, he's in Moria, because he's in the mines of Moria when he fights this. This is just a very silly little cartoon, but I like it. Why not? So you shall not pass. It's, it's a limit line, okay? We want to think of it that way. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to graph these ones. So you can see this one already popped up here. So we need to look at the, the degrees in order to decide. So this is actually gonna have to do with the horizontal isotope. We'll come back to that in just a minute. It was just an oops, I didn't animate it correctly. So for the vertical isotope, we need to make the negative x plus four equals zero. That's how I'm gonna find the vertical isotope. So I'm gonna um, start getting x by itself. So I'm gonna subtract four from both sides. Negative x drops down. The fours cancel, four minus four is zero. Zero minus four is negative four. And I don't wanna know what negative x is. So whenever I have a negative x, I'm going to divide by negative 1 or multiply by negative 1, however you want to do that. Um, really, you're just giving the negative to the other side, so it just flips. So it becomes positive x and positive 4, since they were both negative. When I take that negative and move it to the other side, they both become positive. Okay. So you can see I've placed this red dotted line here. That is my limit line, my vertical limit line. So my function is not going to pass this line. Okay. Now I need to look to see if I have a horizontal isotope. So that's what this degree of zero came up. So that's the top of a degree of zero. There are no exponents, right? So um, whenever there are no exponents, it's going to be zero. And the degree of the bottom, well, I have an x, so that means it has a, um, an exponent of one. We just don't see it. Um, whenever you have an exponent of one, it's just not there visually, but it's assumed to be there. So I have n and I have m. So n equals 0 and m equals 1. So n is less than m. And remember, our three situations, and you should be able to see this on your paper. I know I don't have it again on this one. But if n is less than m, then our isotope is at y equals 0. So now you can see I've placed this blue line. So you can see I have two limit lines. So my function is not going to pass either one of these lines. I'm going to have two kind of swoops going on this um, the coordinate grid here, but they're not going to pass these lines. They're always going to get closer and closer to these lines, but they never actually get there, okay? So it, even though it looks kind of like, even when we were looking at the, the Gandalf one, it looked like it was crossed, kind of going over and touching it. But if you were to zoom in to that function, it actually never actually gets there. It just gets closer to the space between the, the graph and the, the isomptotes get smaller and smaller, but they're never actually zero. They never actually get to each other, okay? Um... So with these ones, you want to choose numbers that make sense for your function. So you do want to take a look at your function and say, how were these numbers chosen? Now, I chose these numbers. You can choose any numbers you would like. You do not have to choose the same numbers I chose. But you do want to be careful about choosing numbers that will fit within your graph. Because even if you get a correct answer here, once you get out, if you chose an, you know, an X that was greater than, what is this, 13, 14? I think 13 might be the biggest you could choose. I don't think it'll actually let you graph right on the edge. So if you chose an X bigger than 13, negative 13, or positive 13, it's not going to let you graph it. It's not wrong. It's just outside of the window they gave you. So be careful about, you know, choosing numbers that are too big um, so that you can graph them. Um, but with these ones, I went through and I chose 0, 3, 5, and 6 specifically so that um, when I go through and I divide, it actually is going to give me nice numbers on my fractions. 
So I kind of chose them on purpose. I didn't have to choose these. There's a coordinate graphing tool. You can choose any numbers you would like. I could have just gone with, you know, 0, negative 1, or sorry, 0, 1, 2, 3, and it would have been perfectly fine. Okay. So on this one, you can see I have 8, and then I plugged in my 0 here, plus 4. Now I have 8 divided by 4. Well, that's 2. And then when I plug in 3 here, because that's the next number I chose, I have negative 3 plus 4. Well, that gives me 1. Well, 8 divided by 1 is 8. And then I have 5. Negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. 8 divided by negative 1 is negative 8. And then negative 6 plus 4, well, that's negative 2. And 8 divided by negative 2 is negative 4. So I specifically chose numbers that would help me in that bottom, the denominator, so that I could nicely divide that with the 8. So it was just a reason I chose those. So just be aware of that. Um, you do not have to choose numbers in that way, but you do want to make sure that they are. there are two numbers on either side. So that's one thing. Um, I did say you could go, you know, one, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Well, that wouldn't work um, simply because 0, 1, 2, and 3 are all on the left side of this isotope here. You do need two points on this side and two points on that side. Um, so that's actually a little bit probably clear why I, I chose, you know, 5 and 6 instead of just going, you know, 1, 2, and 3. Um, so I did 0, and then I did 3, because that worked nicely with my 8 when I worked it out here. But then I had to jump to the other side of the line and choose numbers on this side. So you do have to choose two numbers on either side of the vertical isotope to graph it correctly. That's how Alex needs you to graph it. So this is what it's going to look like when you do this. Um, I, um, on this one, once you graph the lines, because you do have to graph the two isotopes, and then you're going to have to graph the four points, and then you're going to be able to click the graph, um, um, the function graphing tool, and it will automatically graph it like this correctly. As long as you have your isotopes in the correct place and you have two points on either side, it will graph it correctly. All right, so that was um, finding our isotopes and graphing a rational function. I hope that helped, and I will see you in the next video.